Welcome back to another Healthy Hustle. We're right in the middle of our three-part gut health series with Dr. Jan Paulson. For those of you who are just turning in, Dr. Jan Paulson is a doctor of acupuncture and oriental medicine and is licensed and certified to treat patients with acupuncture and herbal medicine. As a medical herbologist, Dr. Paulson has extensive education and practice in the art of medical herbology, but of course that's not all. After some years in practice, Dr. Jan returned to education to complete her clinical doctoral degree in integrative medicine, women's health, and advanced acupuncture techniques. Dr. Paulson has over 35 years of experience working in both Western and Eastern healthcare settings. She excels in the art of medical intuition and targets the cause of disease that others cannot find. During the last Healthy Hustle, we explored the power of whole foods. Today, we're going to dive right into the, to the gut-brain axis. So, as usual, let's go ahead and get right after it. Dr. Paulson, after exploring your website, I could really tell that you treat the body as a whole. Um, rather than just treating the symptoms, you look for the root cause, right? So how does the gut fit into this root cause equation? And more specifically, can you talk about the gut-brain axis for us? Well, so... So we're an information system, correct? Every, it's like a web. So we have, you can imagine a spider web. And so we have a web of information system in our body that's interconnected in so many different ways. And so the, the gut is related to the liver. The gut is related to the heart. The gut is related to the kidney. The gut is related to the lung. The gut's related to the brain. The big thing with the gut-brain access is that we have neurotransmitter chemicals in our brain, basically, and, and neuroreceptors in our brain that take up these chemicals that, that give us information then and send information to the rest of the body to elicit other chemical responses. So at the underpinning of chemical responses is information processing in our body. So we don't just have these chemicals that know what to do. We have information telling these chemicals when to emit themselves and what to do. And so we also have equal or, or at least equal amount of neurotransmitter receptors in our gut so that when we eat food, we have stretch receptors and nutrient receptors in our gut that speak to our brain. So when we eat fiber, say something really fibrous, we just ate an apple or a carrot, something very fibrous, our stretch receptors tell our brain, oh, lots of fiber just came in. This is good, you know. And when we eat nutrients, so when we wake up in the morning and we eat our breakfast and it's something like a very nutritious breakfast, one of my favorite breakfasts that makes me feel the best is chicken stir fry. I just, it sets me for the day. Chicken and vegetables and I'm just gung-ho all day long. So my brain is getting the message, wow, vegetables, lots of, of, of fibers coming in and and protein and vegetables, lots of nutrients are coming in. So my brain's going, oh, I'm being fed wonderfully. And so it just starts pumping out and it's working really good. And I have all this energy in my brain. And if I don't, if I say have coffee for breakfast or no breakfast, my because I just fasted for a good eight hours, right? I've slept, mm -hmm. I've fasted. My body's reset, rested and repaired during that time. And I get up and I have nothing or coffee. And my brain goes, and I start working, my brain goes, well, nothing came, there's no food. Nothing came in, no stretch receptor response touched the brain, no nutrient receptor response touched the brain. And so my brain starts going, okay, I, I'm gonna really have to start pulling from the body's energy because I'm not getting what I need right now. And so we really tax the rest of our organ systems, most importantly, our adrenals that then have to start pumping out energy and we've got stress now because no food's come in. And so basically our body is taxed and it's struggling because our brain takes up a third of all the energy in our body goes to our, it, we, our brain needs that. So we have to have this energy coming in all the time, a good nutritious energy with fiber and nutrients so that our brain goes, oh good, I'm getting the, the food that I need. And so then the rest of the body can do its job and do what it needs and we stay in so much better balance. So I always tell my patients, why it's so good to eat something for breakfast and break that fast. Mm -hmm. So many people have not done that for so many years that then they've, what we call in Chinese medicine, they've damaged their stomach chi or their stomach energy, their stomach information system has been glitched. 
And so then they, well, I'm not hungry in the morning, though. I mean, we should be hungry in the morning. We're, babies are hungry in the morning, right? Yeah. Children are hungry in the morning. We're supposed to be hungry in the morning. And so basically, you have to then just start introducing those foods and repairing the digestive system to be ready for food in the morning because our brain needs that. So there's this constant conversation between our brain and our gut about what's coming in and how we're going to use it and how the body, the rest of the body then is going to respond to the lack of nutrients that are coming in. Most importantly, like I said, it, it really taxes the adrenals. And so I see, and I know so many other healthcare providers see in their practices, so many people in this day and age with adrenal fatigue. And Western medicine didn't recognize that for many, many years. And they're starting to recognize it now, I think, because of functional medicine. And we know that stress in our life, and we all have stress, whether it's good stress, bad stress, you know, we all have stress in our life. And, and the poor adrenals have to just keep dealing with that stress but when we have small nutritious, like nutritious snacks, some raisins, some apples, some you know, bars from, from um, New Earth, these things that are highly nutritious, then our adrenals can sit back and relax and go, okay, good. I don't have to pump out the, the hormones to you know, keep the blood sugar you know, emitted into the system so that we can work. It can relax and our food can take care of that for us. That's fascinating. So I've talked to several different people about the gut-brain axis. And um, everyone explains it slightly different, right? And I really like the take that you just, the, the way that you just explained it. I had, I had no idea that the brain requires one third of our energy. I, I had no clue. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing you said about that we should be hungry in the morning, I, I, that had never occurred to me either. I've always been a breakfast eater myself, but I have you know close friends and family members who won't eat until noon. They say, oh, I'm just not hungry. But the way you explained it, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That's very yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Well, you know, we have these circadian rhythms, and this is a traditional Chinese medicine tenet, which these people thousands of years ago, they were so intelligent, so clever. They didn't have the distractions that we have today. And how they found out this information is still a mystery, you know. But it's really bearing out in Western science now. Everything that they've set down in their in their comprehensive medical system is really showing in research now to be very, very true and real. And so we know that we have these circadian rhythms in nature and we are part of nature. We are inextricably connected to nature. We are nature. And so we have, we have circadian rhythms in our body too. And we know that because we have sleep circadian rhythms that we understand. We also have energy circadian rhythms. And so we know now that we have these rhythms in our body. In the morning, between 5 to 9 in the morning, the bulk of the information traveling through our system is now like turned on or highlighted. It's got a yellow highlight all over it that is in our digestive system going, okay, I'm ready to receive now. This is the system that wants to receive, and that's in the morning. And so then consequently, that same 12-hour period in the PM, we have the least amount of energy in our digestive system. And we know that too, because we know through science, it's really best to stop eating after seven, right? Yeah. People who eat late, eat a big meal late, a lot of times have acid reflux, they don't sleep well. A lot of insomnia can be healed through the gut and it can be healed through greater nutrients and it can be healed through stopping eating earlier in the evening and don't eat a big meal late at night. So we know we have these rhythms. So that's the rhythm of the digestive system in the morning. It's really there to um, get us going and get our brain food. And, and a lot of people have brain fog and, or they're tired or they just can't concentrate because they're really not feeding their brain well enough. That's fascinating. I like that connection to nature. And it, it, again, it makes a lot of sense to want to eat more in the morning. And then as you're, you know, going into the evening hours to kind of slow down and, um, you know, not eat as much. And I've noticed that in myself, if, if I eat late or I decide I'm going to have ice cream or, you know, whatever, a little treat later in the evening that I don't sleep as well. So that all, that all aligns and it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So there you have it. The gut brain access. It's a rather complex system, but to put it simply, our gut and brain are in constant communication and this communication impacts multiple systems in the body. So it's in our best interest to support the gut and this connection. We're going to go ahead and continue our gut health conversation with Dr. Paulson on the next Healthy Hustle. But until then, 
If you're looking for an avenue to start supporting your gut today, I invite you to look at and try our complete digestive health packet, Essentials. Uh, Essentials is filled with whole food nutrients, including organic well microalgae, prebiotics, probiotics, and digestive enzymes, all working together to provide complete digestive support. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. We're going to catch up with you on the next Healthy Hustle as we continue to explore gut health with Dr. Paulson.